In this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure the Cisco ASA firewall in a high availability mode uh, in active standby. Um, what you'll need is you'll need to find out if your uh, ASA supports high availability, so any model from 5510 upwards, 5505 does not. Um, you need the Security Plus license and you can tell if you have the failover license if, if you go run a show version command and go to the failover section and you'll see failover and it should say perpetual and either active active or active standby um, so do that for both your units make sure that they're both there and then allocate yourself a physical interface for use with um, the failover because we're going to need a failover interface um, okay, let's get into it. So what we're going to do first is we're going to quickly name our ASAs. Sorry, host name ASA primary because this is going to be the primary unit. And we're going to name this one host name ASA secondary. Okay, so basically you have obviously you have primary and secondary so in the active standby configuration so that means that one ASA unit is the primary one that's the one that's functioning and passing data in your network and the other ones just sitting there waiting for something on something on the primary ASA to fail so you it's you know it's uh, down to your choice and the parameters you specify but for instance if a uh, outside or inside interface fails you can say that's a failover event or that will see it as a failover event the um that's it built into the functionality and it will fail over to the second ASA because it's in a belt better health condition than what uh, the primary is so it'll fail to the secondary um and what you have obviously is you have primary secondary and active standby so one unit might be the primary but it could be the standby unit because it's uh, failed it failed fade over to the second ASA sometime before and vice versa the secondary could be the active unit okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and configure failover so what we the first command is failover lan unit primary so obviously this is our primary unit and then what we're going to do is failover lan interface and we're going to give the physical interface an alias of failover link fo link and then we're going to specify the physical interface which is Net zero, and then it's going to tell us that the config that was originally on Gigabit Ethernet zero, if there was any, is going to be cleared. Okay, so the next command is failover interface IP FO link, and then we're going to specify the IP address of 192.168.100.1, and then we're going to configure the standby interface, which is 2. So what are we doing there? What, what that looks, might look a bit, a little bit weird. Well, basically, that standby command is configuring the interface of the standby unit, the the IP address of the physical interface on the standby unit with this command. Well, we're on the ASA primary. Uh, why are we doing that? Well, that's just the way it is. You configure the interface for the secondary. Well, that is because at any time the primary could be the standby interface. So. What you'll see in this moment will sit into that same command on the secondary unit. So then the final command to enter is failover, which enables the failover process. Um, you could optionally specify a failover key, so like a passphrase, um, and you enter this on both units, and basically the units will only talk to each other if they've got that key. Um, so it's, it's more secure. For this example, we're not going to do that. Okay, so we're done on this unit, and let's just check that our interface is up. Yes, so we can see the IP there, up, up, okay. So let's go to our second unit, um, host name, ASA secondary, and we're going to enter the failover LAN unit secondary, because obviously this is our secondary unit. Failover LAN interface, going to specify the same command, if I link, and then we're going to specify net zero for our hardware and again it tells us the the config was cleared and then we're going to specify failover uh, interface IP on FO link and we're going to enter the exact same details as we did as I said before standby 192.168.100.2 
And then we're going to enter failover. And I'm just going to check that our interfaces are up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it must be up. So it's detected an active mate, and it's going to replicate the configuration from our primary unit. Okay. So it's telling us it's... Uh, Okay, end configuration replication to mate. So if we now do a show failover command, we should see two. Yep, so as we can see here, let's go uh, from top to bottom. So failover is on. This is the primary unit. The interface used for failover is the gigabit Ethernet 0, which is up. And the unit poll time is one second, so it's looking at, for uh, another uh, a mate in the uh, in failover terms every one second and it will wait 15 seconds before determining that a mate is dead interface poll frequency what, what does that mean basically your asa is going you for every interface you want to monitor um, you're going to specify well every interface you're going to you uh, on in the failover setup you're going to specify a standby ip address and what that's going to do is the ASA is going to ping across your data network to the IP address of the standby interface. And if it doesn't detect it, well, it's going to do that every five seconds. And then if it, if it doesn't detect it in 25 seconds, it's going to declare that that interface that is unreachable. Uh, monitored interface. So we've got no monitored interfaces at the moment. And it's going to tell us the software version. Sorry, that's one very important point I forgot to mention right at the start of the video. Is that your both your ASAs must be running the uh, same major version of um, of software on the ASA. So eight point four, eight point four. Um, I think there's something to do with the minor. I'm not too sure about the minor version. I think it is only to do with the major version though. Um, but just for peace of mind, both of your ASAs should be exactly the same version. That's how I always do it. So we can see ours is 8.42 and our mate is 8.42. Last failover was 10 past 8, blah, blah, blah. So this this unit, primary, and is the active unit, active time. And the our mate is secondary and is in the standby mode. Okay. And then we can also specify show failover history. And it'll tell us all about what happened when was the last time it failed over okay so the best way obviously to tell whether what what unit you're on is always to go here this unit is active primary active okay so what we're going to do is we're going to configure our interfaces on our network uh, with our standby IP addresses otherwise without them there will be no failover for them so if we do fail no we want to do interface Gigabit Ethernet one. This is going to be my sorry, being a bit of a div. Gigabit one, and we're going to specify name of inside um, description inside interface, and then we're going to give it an IP address, and it's going to be one nine two one six eight dot one oh one. Dot one with a subnet mask two five five two five five dot zero, and then we're going to configure a standby IP address, which will be assigned to the secondary unit, which I'm going to show you in a second. Let's see if I do one oh one dot two, and just let that do that for a second. Okay, so and now we're going to no shut down that. Now we're going to configure our outside interface, interface gigabit Ethernet two. AMIF outside. Yeah, we know that. Description is going to be outside interface. And the IP address will be. I just do one seven two sixteen dot one hundred dot one two five five two five five zero and then again we're going to specify a standby interface sixteen one hundred dot two. Okay, so we've configured our outside interface, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do show in IP brief just to confirm all of that. So we've got our inside, our um, sorry, our failover, our inside, and our outside interface. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do write standby, which is going to copy the synchronized configuration with our mate. 
so it's going to be game configuration and configuration okay so that this is obviously our primary active unit and then we're going to go on to our secondary so you can see that it's been copying show failover this is our secondary standby unit and i'm going to show you the interface that um how those commands have affected these interfaces so there you go they've got the dot two our failover our inside and our outside and that's basically failover that's the uh, core of it and the basics get you up and running there are a few more options that you can play about with but go away and read them um, go away and read about it yourself it's a lot more fun and um, you know you got to find what suits suits you hope you found this video informative um, if they've got any feedback please leave it I'm always looking to improve my videos and also please subscribe thank you very much